Wait it's till I tell my husband. He'll be no way, no way. Yeah. Okay, let's bow our heads for prayer. Most precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, that we can uh, once again come together to study your word. We thank you for for your word, dear Lord, that you have preserved it through the years so that we do have it to study and delve into and learn more about your character. And we thank you and praise you for that. We invite the Holy Spirit in our studies this morning, dear Lord, that you would lead and guide and direct and um, that you would open our hearts and minds so that we may hear what you have for us to learn from your word this morning. I pray these things in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Katie, you said you'll read. Sorry, my kids are like playing right by me and I live in a split level and they're like, there's not an away in my house for me <laughs> to go to that's quiet. So yeah, I, I feel that my husband was sick earlier this week and one of the girls I mentor, she lives in Orlando and um, she called me and I had to go all the way into his office just to get, so I didn't keep him mm -hmm. up because I'm like, there's no, there's no privacy in this house. Mm -hmm. there just isn't. So I had to go in there. So uh, if you don't mind reading verses one through five of Song of so Songs 3. Okay. On my bed, night after night, I sought him whom my soul loves. I sought him, but did not find him. I must arise now and go about the city. In the streets and in the squares, I must seek him whom my soul loves. I sought him, but did not find him. The watchmen who make the rounds in the city found me. And I said, have you seen whom my soul loves? Scarcely had I left them when I found him whom my soul loves. I held on to him and would not let him go until I had brought him to my mother's house and into the room of her who conceived me. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or by the hinds of the fields, that you will not arouse or awaken my love until she pleases. Okay, so I looked into this and I got a lot of stuff from the commentaries um, on this, but one said that this snapshot probably records another dream or daydream of the maiden, as in the previous chapter with this section ending with her addressing her companions. We don't imagine that they haunted or stalked this loving couple with their actual presence at their intimacy. Um, although I know that, well, anyway, I'm not going to go down there. Uh, so the, this connotation of the word for bed remains, uh, reminds us of Hebrews 13, four marriage is honorable among all and bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers, God will judge the Bible consistently condemns sex outside of marriage commitment, fornicators and adulterers, God will judge, but the Bible celebrates sexual love within the commitment of marriage as indicating in the song of Solomon. And so again, like we talked about last week with the preparation of this um, book, sex is good inside of marriage. God created it. The church, I feel like has missed that part. Um, people look at it like it's bad and it's looked down upon, but it's not because it's something God created to enjoy. I mean, that is the one thing you and your spouse can enjoy with one another that no one else can share. And so um, it is, it is just a beautiful thing. And so we're just kind of seeing it's beautiful, but it's beautiful inside of the way God created it. Um, so verse three, she did not sit down and say to any one of them, "O watchman of the night, they, um, thy company shares me. The streets are lonely and dangerous, but if thou art near, I feel perfectly safe and I will be content to stay a while with thee. Um, nay, but she leaves the watchman and still goes along the streets until she finds him whom her soul loveth. I like this because it does some sometimes take action. Like she isn't just sitting there dwelling. She is seeking. And I tell people who doubt God, have you looked for him? I mean, you can't find someone if you're not looking. Uh, meanwhile, God is always there. I actually had a client this week and she was an atheist and she has no, um, she comes all the time, um, but she just, she, she, she wants nothing to do with God, but yet she comes every week knowing that we're a Christian organization. And, uh, I just asked her, you know, like, have you prayed? Like, cause she said, I just can't believe in this. Like, I feel like y'all have this make believe God that like, you want him to be what you want him to be. And I said, no. <laughs> and I said, he is who he is in his word, but you have to read his word to know who he is. And I just said, have you ever prayed for him to make himself known to you? And then she's like, no. And I said, well, why don't you start there? And I feel like that this is exactly here. She was, she 
was lo looking for somebody. So she was proactive. And I think that that's how we need to be with our relationship with God. Um, and those who doubt God, don't condemn them for doubting God, challenge them to look for God is a big difference. If you're going to throw a fit, like a fist at them and be like, what, you know, that's not going to win them over, but because that's not what God does. That God is not a forceful God. He is not, he's a loving father. He's not going to force a relationship on anyone. Um, and so I, I think that that's, again, that's what we see with this couple. They are loving one another. They are wanting to be with each other, just like we should yearn to be with Jesus. Um, so verse four, and in either interpreting or applying Song of Songs three, one through four to the relationship between Jesus and his people, many commentators have noted that this is an example of how the believer under some sense of separation from Jesus must seek after him. Um, and th these verses honestly are the reason why I chose this chapter because I, I just, as I was reading this, I just, I just want that. I want to long for God the way that she longs for her man. Like I want to get up and think of the Lord and seek him and just want to be with him. Um, and so this like, to me, was like more of a visual of that. It was more like a, like, do I wake up and do I, would I go search for him if I don't find him? I mean, sometimes you go through the motions, sometimes you're, you feel really close to God. And then sometimes he just feels distant. I think it's sometimes it's like, you just go through that, that place in your life where, um, and even sometimes the hardships bring us closer to God. And when things are good, it's like, blessed be the name of the Lord, that song, you know, it's like, I always often think of that because whenever the sun's shining on my face, you know, I can bless him, but am I seeking him? Am I yearning for him in those times? Am I desiring him? But whenever we go through something, we're like, we're, we'll just cling to him, you know, because we feel like that's all he, we have, but that shouldn't be the case. We should cling to him always, no matter the circumstances. And uh, I just really, really liked this visual of just yearning for God in this, um, in this way. So I got this from Matthew Henry. It's a long, but it's so good. Um, it was hard to the Old Testament church to find Christ in the ceremonial law. The watchmen of the church gave little assistance to those who sought after him. The night is a time of coldness, darkness, and drowsiness, and dim apprehensions concerning spiritual things. At first, when darkness and drowsiness and of dim, dim apprehensions, or sorry, at first, when uneasy, some feeble efforts are made to obtain the comfort of communion with Christ. This proves in vain. The believer is then roused to increase diligence. The streets and broadways seem to imply the means of grace in which the Lord is to be sought. Application is made to those who watch for men's souls. Immediate satisfaction is not found. We must not rest in any means, but by faith apply direct, directly to Christ. The holding of Christ and not letting him go denotes earnest cleaving to him. What prevails is a humble, ardent, suing by prayer with a lively exercise of faith on his promises. So long as the faith of believers keeps hold of Christ, he will not be offended at their earnest asking. Yea, he is well pleased with it. The believer desires to make others acquainted with his Savior. Wherever we find Christ, we must take him home with us to our houses, especially to our hearts. And we should call upon ourselves and each other to be aware of grieving our holy comforter and provoking the departure of the beloved. And so I just thought that I just thought that was beautiful. And then applying this symbolically, Charles Spurgeon noted these steps of the maiden's progress toward her beloved. She loved him. She sought him. She found him not. She found him. She held him. She brought him. Spurgeon also made great application of the fact that the maiden held him and would not let him go. Mark that according to the text, it is very apparent that Jesus will go away if he is not held. I held him and I would not let him go as if he would be gone if he had not been firmly retained. When he met with Jacob that night at the um, Jabbok, he said, let me go. He would not go without Jacob's letting him, but he would have gone if Jacob had loosened his hold. The patriarchs replied, I will not let go of thee except thou bless me. This is one of the Christ's way, the manners is which uh, one of the peculiars of his character when he walked to Emmaus with the two disciples, he made as if he were, he would have gone further. They might have known it was, sorry, it was not none other than the angel of the covenant, but that very habit, he would have gone further, but they constrained him saying, abide with us for the day is far spent. 
If you are willing to lose Christ's company, he is never intrusive. He will go away from you and will leave you till you know his value and begin to pine for him. I will go, says he, and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face and their affliction. They will seek me early. He will go unless they will hold him. Jesus must be held. He will go unless you hold him. Jesus is willing to be held. He is not trying to escape us. Jesus can be held and he will, he can grasp him by faith. Jesus himself must be held, not merely a creed, tradition, or a ceremony. So again, we're just, he's just, Spurgeon is just really implement, like saying what here on what they are doing. They want to hold one another. They want to be held. And she even went to him, but then brought him back and embraced him. And it's weird to think of that with the Lord because he's so holy and just. And it's weird to even think of that. Like if we, if we think of this, like more of a physical attribute, in that sense, because we can't physically hold Jesus, right? Um, but I have to say, through the Holy Spirit, I feel like he can definitely hold us, right? Have you ever been in that place where you have felt like there's nothing and no one there, and you have just felt his presence so much that you felt the Holy Spirit just holding you? And I have definitely felt that in my life during the hardships, and it's just so awesome. So hold on to your story on that, because I want to hear a place where you've had that. I'm just going to finish this verse five, and then we'll go to that. Young women of Jerusalem begins a repetition of the ref refrain of 2-7 and is tra um, transitioned to the central section of the wedding day and night. And so that's what we're going to go to into the next trans transition of the next verses. But um, does anybody have any time in a sense where you've just felt like the Lord has just held you, been there with you and everything? Yeah, I've had that time where it's like you you're just so the trial was just you couldn't even breathe it was so hard that you feel like you're just at the bottom and you can't breathe you feel like you're drowning and then you can't even see anything but jesus you just look up and say jesus because you can't even there's just you're just there and then you'll feel this peace wash it feels like the most coziest blanket and it feels like you're just being lifted up you're not you know but you just this, you can't describe it such an indescribable piece and you know everything will be okay and yeah it's like that you just it's so such a beautiful feeling and even though and you get through it so yeah I love that and that goes with the piece that surpasses all understanding mm -hmm. right it does during my I mom's think... last days I lived at my sister's house and just slept on the floor next to my mom in the, in the living room. Like just, I was just there with her and my sister had, um, I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard, um, the Christian pianist Dino, he plays beautiful hymns and they have like sometimes nature sounds, but they're very gentle and very sweet. And if you grew up with hymns and you know, the words, then it like ministers to a deeper part of your soul as well. And so she had like a Pandora radio station at that playing. But while my mom's last days were happening, I just kept feeling the song standing on holy ground, that it was just like a sacred place that we were in. And then after she died, I don't know if you've ever heard the Brooklyn Tabernacle song in the presence of Jehovah. Mm -hmm. I mean, look it up. It's a fabulous song. And when she died, that's what I switched to the song that was running through my head. And I just felt god was there mm. that it was a holy time and that there was healing in his presence mm. Mm. Really cool. i felt similar well, peace katie when my mom passed away and and i think sometimes that um i think the lord sends people to put in our paths too because i had so, i was so overwhelmed with all the things i needed to take care of because my sister lives out of town and um so it was on me to take because my dad's elderly to take care of you know getting the service together and all that kind of thing and i had i had no idea how to do that i'd never done that before and it just seemed like everywhere i turned there was someone that the lord put in my path to help me with you know, let, let me take care of that for you. Let me do that. And I think, man, how many times have I been nudged to do that for someone else? And it may have been the Lord nudging me. And when we don't do that, you know, we may be, we may 
we may be missing the opportunity to be the comfort of the Holy Spirit using us to comfort someone else. <clears throat> so I often think of that now when I'm like, do I really have time to do that or whatever? But I think of the people that were put in my path to help me and give me peace and give me comfort. And looking back on that, it's, it's so hard. I'm like, I don't even know how I got through that once I got through it. But it's like, he took me step by step by step by step. And he gave me his peace. And then he put people in my path and, and you, you can't tell me that's not what it was. Cause I totally believe that. Yeah. My old pastor used to, oh, sorry. Read. No, I was just going to say, I know that when my husband died and he was um, English from England. And so I was like, oh my Lord, how do I handle this? Because he has holdings in England and I just, all of a sudden I freaked out and his two sons were older and they just said, uh, if you need us, let us know. But I had let them know and they never responded. And I'd let my sons know. And one of my sons, the um, next day after I had prayed all night about help, trying to get it worked out, he texted me, he said, I'm already, he was in Germany. He said, I'm already in Silver Springs, Maryland. I came in on a C-130. I'll be down there this afternoon to Birmingham. And I, I want to tell you, I just, I got down on my knees and I said, thank you, Lord, because I needed somebody to help me. I really did. Thank you. Wow. I don't know what I would have done. That is really cool. For me, I, uh, I've been having... Go ahead. Sorry, it's Janie. For me, I've been going through a, like a really hard time because of my marriage and everything. And um, I decided because I felt like I heard from God to to stay and to um, if He was willing to go through counseling. And so He's in private counseling. I'm in private counseling. And in three weeks, we start couples counseling. Um, and so I'm really struggling because everything in me because I've been through this before, says run. But I keep hearing from God, stay. Mm. And so I'm really, you know, and so I've been taking that and going, okay, God, I need you to move me forward. I need you to put people in my life. And I've had this overwhelming, since I decided to stay, um, this overwhelming peace that it's going to work out and that God can fix this um, because he had never been violent before. And so, and he's never been violent since. And so it just, I don't know. I'm still open to the fact that if it doesn't work out, if he doesn't, because it takes all of us, it takes God, me and him to be willing. And if he chooses not to be willing, I still have all of the things set in place to leave and um, to get help and, all of that so it's not like I'm being stupid and just saying okay I'm here um but yet at the same time I'm just listening to God and it's it's very hard because sometimes I get judgment from people because I'm staying and then other times I get judgment because I'm because I'm you know because I didn't stay at, you know, in the beginning I was talking about leaving. So I was like, um, I had to quit listening to what people were saying and start mm -hmm. listening to what God was saying to me That's right. and just be like with God, that this was going to be worked out through him. And that I had to know that it takes my husband being willing, me being willing and God, and most importantly, God first. And so we've been watching sermons together every day. Um, in the morning before we start our day and listening to worship songs before we start our day and praying together before we, as soon as we get up and praying together when we go to bed. And then at lunchtime, when he comes home, we read a devotion from a couple's devotion book. And so it's really been helpful. Um, and I just feel like we're on the right track. And I, I'm just really trying hard not to let that fear come in of okay Jamie don't be an idiot leave leave you need to leave you know um and and trust in God that that this is where I need to be and when I when I do that I'm at peace mm. when I when I go into what people have said to me um people that have been through abusive situations 
and people who are in the church and say, don't leave. And then people that are, have been in infusive situations and gotten a divorce. When I listen to all of that chatter, that's when the peace goes away. And what I need to listen to is God. And so it's just unreal to me because I've never done this. I've never done this where, where when things get bad, I stay. I usually, if things get bad, I, I mean, I stay until I can't take it no more. And then, you know, because I have long-term relationships is all I've ever had is long-term relationships. And then I just leave and I'm done with it. But this time I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm married now. Um, and so I wanted to be able to do this differently. I wanted to just focus on what God was telling me and not focus on what my inner fears are, what the past has done to me, my demons from the past what other people are saying. I wanted to really focus on God. So I'm really trying to do that. And when I do that, I am peaceful, completely peaceful. Yeah. And I think it's just handing it to the Lord and letting God take it and just going from there. Yeah. Um, right. So very cool. That, that's a, that's good news, Janie, in a way for that we can definitely be praying for sure. Um, okay. Let's get to the next section. Uh Katie, if you don't mind reading verses six through eight. And thank you all for sharing. Those were awesome. What is this coming up from the wilderness, like columns of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all the scented powders of the merchant? Behold, it is the traveling couch of Solomon, 60 men around it, of the mighty men of Israel. All of them are wielders of the sword, expert in war. Each man has his sword at his side guarding against the terrors of night. Okay, so verse six, the word this is feminine in Hebrew, perhaps indicating that Shulamith was in the process or procession coming to Solomon, coming up from the wilderness, suggests two complementary allusions. One, Israel's emergence from the wilderness they had entered after deliverance from Egypt, and two, Adam and Eve's emergence from the wilderness they had entered after disobedience. The imagery of the Shulamith as a garden paradise on the wedding night is evident on the latter. The implicate, impl implicate comparison of Shulamith to Israel are evidence of the former. Both illusions underscore the idea of romant or the ideals of romantic love. Like Israel's new land, their love was the foundation of a new life together, like a new paradise. Their love recovered what romantic love was meant to be. Um Verse seven, we might see, we might say that Solomon's wedding party had 60 groomsmen. They weren't there to keep Solomon from backing out of the wedding. They were there to show that he was a powerful man who could genuinely protect his maiden. This is kind of crazy because last, like, as I was doing this Saturday night, my husband actually went to a bachelor party <laughs> because of, he's a groomsman and a wedding coming up. So I was like, wow, that's kind of crazy that I'm doing this. And then he was there. So, um, and so that was really cool. And it was a really cool bachelor party because it was like um, the guy, my husband's the old guy in it because um, he's mentoring the guy who is getting married. But um, one of the guys is a pastor. Um, and then I can't remember the other two, but they're all really strong believers. So they just kind of sat around, they went out to eat and then they went around the fireplace or uh, they went out actually to the church and they did a fire pit and um just poured into this guy about marriage and just talked about marriage the whole time and just poured into him and prayed over him and uh, my husband said it was like the most holy bachelor party he's ever been to <laughs> it was just a really cool way to just kind of pour in and prepare him for marriage so I thought that was really cool um therefore the maiden had no need to worry in fear of the night because she was becoming one with her beloved what belongs to him now also belong to her this expresses the oneness of life and the shared life that should exist between husband and wife. She and Solomon were so identified with each other at the, this state that there was a perfect oneness between them. What was his was hers. What he enjoyed, she enjoyed. This is union. Um, I feel like a lot of this, some of this is maybe getting a little changed nowadays. Um, I know like Dave Ramsey is big on having finances together, but I know couples that don't have finances together that they're definitely split down the middle and they don't have that oneness of that. Um, and so uh, that oneness bond kind of has been a little thwarted lately. Um, I can, I mean, some people I can, I, I don't know, it's, it's their life and I don't have to worry about it. So 
Um, but this is the union that God created in the beginning. Um, and then we as believers need to be well armed. I can't help but to think about the form of God here. We have the sword of the spirit with us always. Are we skilled to use it? That is the one thing I think I'm so excited about next year about going through the New Testament and just seeing just how powerful the Holy Spirit is and that we have that Holy Spirit that lives in us. And so I'm kind of excited, but I'm also excited about Isaiah now that I, it's hard to go back into Song of Songs like mindset because I've been in Isaiah. So it's just like, oh, trying to flip my brain into this. Um, but that was a small section. Does anybody have anything on that? What about the oneness of marriage? Um, anybody have, have a, on any of this? I have a question. Mm -hmm. You may not have any feelings on it or you don't want to have any um, about joining finances. I mean, how do you feel about that? I, after my first marriage and everything was joined all the way around and when he walked off with somebody else and then had I not had a very good lawyer he was getting ready to just practically take everything out from underneath me and he had already started taking out money out of the savings and putting it into another account that I never knew he had an investment account and um, they said at the bank that it didn't need my signature, that that was fine because he was primary on the account and I was secondary. So I learned trying to get my insurance straightened out, trying to do all that. It took me several years and I struggled in those several years trying to get straightened out. So I have never since then with my last husband, I mean, we had separate finances and did fine, but we came together when needed on certain things that we agreed on. Yeah, I think that that's where it goes per circumstance because like God intended marriage to be forever. And sometimes we can't change that. I mean, Bill, you and me are perfect examples of that. Going through a divorce, we know that that happens sometimes. You can't control the other person to force the other person to be with you. So therefore, because this is a fallen world, it doesn't always work out the way God intended it to be. <laughs> so on that though, but I feel like if you are both, whenever you get married as a Christian, I feel like if you are both seeking the Lord, because this is a, this, this, book especially is showing and much of scripture is that we should not be married unequally yoked so whenever you are marrying somebody that is equally yoked with you finances should be together I mean that just is like me and my husband even though I'm divorced like my me and my husband's finances are completely together because we're a team at this we're we're working for the same goal and everything um sometimes you can't control that sometimes you can't control the other person again and um like I'll say, for instance, my sister and brother-in-law, they have separate finances and it works. Their marriage is better because of it. It just is because they yeah. just could not see eye to eye on it. So I do think it's per circumstance, but I think God's design, I think God's design is for us to have it together. I just think that because you're working, that's like divorce. The, one of the number one reasons for divorce is money. And, but it can be also something that you can tag team together. And I'm thankful that me and my husband went through financial peace. I've been through it four times because I needed it a lot. And then now I'm, I help Lori with teaching the money um, thing I have in the past. I don't know if I will continue to do that, but, um, and I just see whenever you can do finances together, it's such a win. Now I say that I hate budget meetings. I hate when me and my husband have them. I sometimes don't show up and sometimes I do, but I, but I think that um, on that though, it is something that we can also, it's just fun to be able to give. And it's fun to be able to look at that together and say, this is the, this is what we can do together. If, you know, if we work at it together and stuff. So I think as God design, God design, yes. Um, you have that oneness, but I think that it's per circumstance. I mean, uh, I know Dave Ramsey, he's the one I listened to. I listened to him probably on finances and I listened to the radio. There's a guy on eight o'clock on the radio that I listened to in finances and he's, He's kind of the same as what I had said is Dave Ramsey's a staunch, you should do finances together no matter what. But the guy who I listened to, he's a kingdom advisor. I can't remember what exactly the crown, I think he's crown Larry Burkett's old ministry. Um, and he does say, you know, there's some circumstances where it's just going to have to be separated. And, and Vale, I think with you being remarried, your kids were older then, were they older? Yes. And yes. I think that that is, that also makes a huge difference. 
I think that you have older kids, you, I, I think, again, it's circumstances. I, I, I do. I, I don't think that there's anything. I mean, I think that's between you and your spouse and you have to pray about it and see what God is kind of directing y'all to. Does anybody well, else have anything on that? Does anybody else, I mean, come I mean, y'all probably have more wisdom on that than me. Um, what, do, what does everyone else think on that? I just feel like uh, we live in such a broken world. And actually right now, currently, one of my sisters is in a not great situation. She had been kind of a stay-at-home mom for a really long time. And then um, now it's just, there's some things going on. And so my sister here and I are trying to like help her set things up. Like anytime dad's going to give her money, it's going to go into an account here and not where her husband can get to it right now because we live in a fallen world and it's, people are broken and like, I don't, I don't know what to say because I, my husband and I have combined, combined finances. I'm a stay at home mom. I take care of the kids, but I also know that like, then <laughs> sucks. Yeah. I mean, I had a friend at the hospital and she always had an account separate that her husband never knew about. And she's like, that's it. If he leaves me fun and like she in her mind always had that and I'm like that's not really good and healthy if you're she said girl you just never know with these men you just never know <laughs> I was like okay <laughs> you know I mean that's sad I laugh at it I shouldn't it's really sad but she just she always prepared because she saw like what Katie was saying she saw so much brokenness in her life and so I don't know does anybody else have anything like anybody anyone well it worked out for us we came together when we needed to on big things and every toward the end of every year we each pledged so much together to different things that we agreed on giving to so i mean and he helped with um, my sons who never really had a father and um was great with them and saw to it that when I'm got braces I mean because he said I want to do that so I mean it it worked out for us and it was mm -hmm. a lot better situation because after going through several years of struggling because my husband at that point that was an accountant was taking everything away I was like you know I will never do this again yeah I feel like there's more than one way to combine finances. And it really sounds like you and your husband worked together on it, whether they were combined or not. It sounds like you guys came together on it and worked together. And I think that that's what combined finances yeah. is supposed to be about, not about like what's mine and what's yours and yeah. whatever. I think it's just supposed to be about like having the common goals and working together. Yeah, I agree. Yep. I yeah. And for me, it for me and my husband, we had no choice but to keep it together because his brain injury keeps him from remembering things. So we don't have a choice. We have to have it together because if we don't, then <laughs> it's an issue. So, yeah, I think there's different seasons of life too, Vale. And I think you were in a, a season the where that's what was appropriate for you. I think a lot of times with who Dave Ramsey is talking about they, I mean, they have to work together to get out of where they're at. I mean, they have hit the rock bottom. They have hit. And so they need that team building camaraderie to work together, to put everything together, to see little wins so that it keeps the motivation going. And then they, yeah. you know, and it builds. so I think, I think there's different seasons and I think what's right for some may not be right for others, but I agree with Shannon, what she said. I think, I think, God has an ideal for everything. And I think in a perfect world, <laughs> that this would be the ideal for everybody. And so, um, yeah, I, my husband and I, when, before I quit to stay at home and be um, homeschool our son and everything, I worked and I made more money than my husband. And he felt like he still wanted to be the provider. And he said, if you want a house, then, because we were renting at the time, he said, you put whatever amount of money you want toward the fund towards the house, and that will be our house fund. He said, I'll take care of everything else. So, I mean, we might as well have been working together because I, I wanted a house and all my money <laughs> went in that house. And I mean, we were, we were working towards the same goal, even though we had different. But once I stayed home, they have to be, I mean, they have to be joined because, you know, I don't, I don't have any money coming in. Yeah. So my part-time job is saving money. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. And that's cool. Cause you got this, you end up getting your house. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, he wanted to pay cash for a house. I didn't want to wait that long, but we ended up, I mean, we worked so hard together. We put half down and only had to borrow half. And then we paid that off wow. in seven years. And so, awesome. wow. That's, amazing. I mean, we were, we were determined. And it's a humble little house. I mean, it's just, it's a very small, humble, little, but it's all we need and yeah. it's fun. So, yeah, very cool. That's a great question though, Val. Well, I know that when uh, I married my husband, my house needed so many things done, but I mean, I just not been able to afford it. And he came in and he said, what do you think about doing this, doing that? I said, well, yeah, but who's paying for this? He said, I will. I'm here now. Don't worry. And he even went to um, our priest and he said to him, he said, um, what I want to do, because this is a second marriage for both of us, is that I make life easier and better and show her that I do want things to be right for both of us. And so he remodeled the kitchen and the bathrooms and did a whole lot of things that when I look at him now and he's not here, I think, thank you. I really appreciate this. You know, yeah, that's awesome. Bless those guys that come in and pick up the broken pieces of us and protect yeah. us. And I mean, I didn't have a broken marriage, but I had a really bad relationship before my husband. And I just appreciate that about him so much. And I, the way you're talking about your husband, I just love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the God bless the broken road that brought me home to you is what I think of. Like when I heard that song the first time, I was like, that's it. That's it. It's exactly me and my husband. Um, very cool. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and just finish this off. And I was hoping I saw some new people on, but I think they hopped off and I was really sad because I was thinking we'd get done early, which we will. And I was going to do like a go around the zoom and introduce so it's kind of sad. I think somebody maybe or maybe just the picture turned off but whenever we're done we can um, kind of go around and just kind of introduce and for people who are on new um uh, Katie do you mind reading verses 9 through 11 finish it off all right King Solomon has made for himself a sedan chair from the timber of Lebanon he has made its posts of silver, its back of gold, and its seat of purple fabric, with its interior lovingly fitted out by the daughters of Jerusalem. Go forth, O daughters of Zion, and gaze on King Solomon with the crown with which his mother has crowned him on the day of his wedding and on the day of his gladness of heart. Yeah, man, that is like, that's a nice ride right there. Um, verse nine, the maiden was impressed not only with the opulence of the Okay, I looked this up how to say it, the palanquin, but especially that he, which is, um, when I looked that up, I meant to write it down what it was, which was like the, what was it? it was, well, anyway, I'll just keep on reading because it answers it, but especially that he shared all these symbols of authority and prestige with her. Solomon shared his best with his maiden and Solomon's best was pretty good. This is why a boy must grow up and become a man before he can be a good husband and why the process of preparing to become a husband and being a husband is good for maturing men. Love and marriage frequently bring out the noblest qualities in a person. A carefree and somewhat careless young man may become very responsible and diligent. A childish boy may become steady and manly. Why? Because love is the mother of virtue and the father of maturity. The one you love should bring forth your best qualities and make you a better person. Um, remember marriage is to make you holy, not happy. Um, it's not always going to make you happy, but it's supposed to make you holy because then in marriage, we see our sinful self and we see how selfish we are because that person is always with us and sees us all the time. Um, considering that Solomon had his heart drawn away to many women and that these women drew his heart away from God. It is hard to see how this amazing collection of love poems could have come from such a corrupt man. This passage hints at one possible explanation. Could it be that this is the indication that if the so song did not come from Solomon, it originated before his crowning in his most innocent period? This kind of, to me, backs up the theory that we talked about last week. Um, I do think that it was, like, I in my mind, I have to think that it was like 20 years before Solomon turned away from God whenever he wrote this, because he just had such a grasp of love. Um, and, and it just shows such a, just such a portrait of Christ. I don't know. I mean, I, 
it's not one of those things I'm going to go on my deathbed and just like stand on. I, I mean, I just know that it's God's word and he wrote it and that we wanted to enjoy it and he wants us to enjoy it. Um, it was a good, glad wedding because their love was real. It was passionate, but it was also pure and restrained to the proper channels. This principle made it a glad day, not only for the maiden and the beloved, but also for everyone. So that's what weddings are. Every um, Weddings are for um, a time to celebrate that couple, to remind us to pray for them, to, to remind us. I like going to weddings because it just reminds me of the vows I made in a refresher. <laughs> Sometimes I need them. <laughs> and so it's just a great thing to just be a part of and just to see you know, you see that cuteness. So you're like, oh, aren't they just so precious and cute? Oh, like, it's just so nice. Um, so I'll end with Matthew Henry. Um, a wilderness is an emblem of the world. The believer come, comes out of it when he is delivered from the love and its sinful pleasures and pursuits and refuses to comply with its customs and fashions to seek happiness and communion with the Savior. A poor soul shall come up at last under the conduct of the comforter, like a cloud of incense ascending from the altar or the smoke of the burnt offerings. This signal of pious and devout affections and the mounting of the soul heavenward. The believer is filled with the graces of God's spirit. His devotions now are very lively. These graces and comforts are the holy Canaan. He who is in the peace of his people, the king of the heavenly Zion, was provided for the safe convenience of his redeemed through the wilderness of this world. The bed, the peliquin was contrived for rest and easy con conveyance, but its beauty and magnificence showed the qualities of its owner. The church is well guarded. More are with her than it are against her. Believers, when they repose to, in Christ and with him, though they have their fears in the night, are yet safe. The chariot here den denotes the covenant of redemption the way of our salvation this is the work of christ which makes him loved and admired in the eyes of the believers it is framed and contrived both for the glory of christ and for the comfort of believers it is well or ordered and all things ensure the blood of the co covenant that rich purple is the cover of his chariot by which believers are sheltered from wind and storms of divine wrath and the troubles of this world but the midst of it is that love of Christ, which passes knowledge. This is for believers to repose upon Christ and his gospel, manifest himself, take special notice of his crown, applying this to Christ. It speaks the honor put upon him and his power and dominion. Um, I just thought that was really beautiful. Um, I just love how Matthew Henry always brings everything back to Christ. And I think that that is what's so important. That's what the New Testament does. Everything in the New Testament, it should be a portrait of Christ. Um, and we see that so much in the Song of Songs. We see the, so much of the beauty and the love God created um, in marriage and, and, and a relationship with the Lord. Um, does anybody have anything on that last section? Okay, so since we have extra time, I was what I was like, I knew we'd have extra time. Uh, I did have a question. Um, is there so is there anything that I can be doing better for the digging deep group? Is there anything that um that is lacking or anything like that that y'all see that maybe I can do better with? And be honest, I'm okay with criticism. Honestly, you're doing amazing. And I can't thank you enough. I mean, because it's a lot to put a lesson together. And then the way you break it down and do everything, I, I can't thank you enough. And then hosting us every week and just, you're so thank you. I think wow. you're doing amazing. Yeah. Well, thanks. I, I really, I don't, I don't, I mean, I really just want to, I want to make sure that if there is, if y'all just want to kind of think about it and pray about it too, I'm okay. If there's something I can be doing different too, but thank you, Karen, for your kind words. Um, I, I know we're about to do Isaiah, um, which I'm super excited about, but I also know that holidays, um, and business is coming up as well. Um, and that's the hard part. And I know being consistent in your reading is going to be harder um, I would encourage y'all to try to stick it out. We only have a chapter a day in Isaiah. And if you don't want to dig in, it's just easy to read. Um, but even digging in, it's 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 been good so far. Um, I do want to encourage y'all to stay the course. Y'all are doing awesome. Um, 
And I do think that with it only being a chapter a day, it, it should be easy. I mean, really, honestly, the Old Testament year is the only year that's really hard. Um, and I'm really excited in three years when we do the, the, uh, so next year we have New Testament, then we have Old Testament, and then we're doing a year of wisdom, but we're actually splitting it up Old Testament and New Testament. So we're going to do both that year, which I'm really excited about. Um, if they do, if they do the list that I gave them. So um, I will be really excited because I needed a, I needed, because I don't know about y'all, but I am so excited about Isaiah. Yeah. I'm also ready to be in the New Testament. I'm ready for some Jesus, you know? And that's what I think was so cool about the new, the old Testament is we can always point to Jesus. So he's everywhere. But, um, so yeah, so don't grow weary y'all stay the course. We're almost there. We are almost in October, which is so insane. Um, I just kind of feel like, um, I haven't been engaging as much, but like, this is how much I've read this year, which is not great. <laughs> and so I just feel like I have been falling down a lot and I just look forward to the Thursdays and spending these mornings with you guys, especially, and the daily posts, I feel like are really great. But then when I don't read it, then I feel more guilty and I feel mm -hmm. less likely to read them. You know what I mean? If it's not that anyone's going, well, you didn't read it. You get kicked out of my club. But <laughs> yeah, we're definitely not like that. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, I count you guys, some of my closest friends, like for real. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that that's kind of why I don't always engage with them because I'm like, mm -hmm. I read it and it feels like a personal failure because I just, that's on you girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just feel like I had been making a lot of progress for a while. And then now I'm just like barely keeping my head above water in a lot of ways. And I'm just like, where did all the progress go? And I, I don't know. It's just like one of those things that, okay, another thing that I failed at and not done well. And, and I'm trying to break that bond, but <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at some days. Well, let Isaiah, Isaiah be the, the day. Isaiah, the book um, is so good. I just so. love that the group's like all inclusive. And I think Shannon, you do a really good job of incorporating and including everyone no matter like where you are in your journey or like what's going on so I think that that is is really good you know and I appreciate that and I would say Katie don't worry about being behind you read a lot anyway but the one thing about like being behind is no matter how far like behind I am or no matter what happens it's like I think I was supposed to be behind like that's how I always feel <laughs> Yeah, that is kind of crazy, Amanda, that you say that. Cause like I, I'm doing a, um, like a thing every day with one of the girls I mentor, she's struggling with something. So I said, let's just do a short devotion on the Bible app every day. So we're doing like this thing together. And I, I, I missed one and I went back and I was like, I'm so sorry. I missed a day. And then I went to go do it. And I was like, oh, this is meant for today. This is so great. How does God do this? Like, oh my goodness. Like what is, how, how does he do these things? I don't know. It's just amazing. Um, it's just so cool how he does that. So I agree, Amanda. It's just insane. How yeah, so just keep preaching Jesus, Jill, and change your perspective because that's what we need every day. Yeah. And we'll get through it all. Yeah. Well, mm, yeah. Well, God is gracious. That's for sure. It is. Okay. So does anybody else have anything else? Everyone's kind of left us some. Um, Kind of quiet. I saw your dog has the cone of shame. Yeah. Yep. He does. <laughs> he does. He um he just got over an ear infection, so he's scratching his ear. Uh, and then um he by accident his paw went down and scratched his bottom lip and uh, <laughs> Mm. I didn't want him back on antibiotics again instantly. So I put this on to see if it'll start helping healing it. Oh, this, this thing is like really cool. The coolest cone ever. It's super <laughs> like flexible. Yeah, it's flexible. He can, yeah, he can uh -huh. it and he can't hit like when he itches, it does this. So it doesn't hurt his cut. Oh, I love it. That's awesome. Oh, well, yeah. He's, He's really mm -hmm. oh, that is. That's great. Yeah. yeah. But he hates it. That's why he's moaning over here. 
He's <laughs> moaning, yeah. but it's better than a cut, so. Well, very yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, okay, we'll go ahead and pray. And um, we, I think I'm good for fall break to still meet. Um, so, but I will let y'all know our fall break is in two weeks. Um, so I know it's crazy. I feel like they just started school. And yeah, they did. <laughs> Another off a, a, a week. So there goes that. Well, most of the people's fall break in this area is next week. Vale, is y'all, do you know when your small, fall break is? They don't have one. Yeah, we don't do fall. There's, there's no fall break here either. Really? Wow. No, they, they give more time at Christmas. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, the there county, I think they get it. the city school does do a fall break, but the county that I'm in does not. Wow. Okay, then. I think we, like, here at the school, they get, like, two days or something like that. It's not a full week. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get all week. But then then also, they're out all the time for different stuff, and I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, we we just take off whenever we feel like it, which is awesome. Yeah. Because we're just like, I want to just like, okay, let's go play. Yeah. yeah. We always take fall break to go to my sister's house and go to the pumpkin patch with her. Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I love it. Yeah. Well, how, how much time do y'all have for Thanksgiving? I feel like we have uh, the Wednesday through Friday, but I don't know. The county has all week. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't look that far ahead. I. Yeah. The only reason I know is we're going to a Braves game, so we're really excited. Yeah, most people only have Wednesday through Friday yeah. for that, but we have in the county all week, and then they have an additional five days at Christmas. So it makes up for the time of other things that they don't get. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know when Thanksgiving Oh, so yeah, I, we don't have it in the calendar. My husband hasn't put it in, so... Okay, well, we'll go ahead. I, I think I'm okay to, to still meet that day because I think that we're going to my mentor's house that day, but I think we're going to wait until after lunch and then head out. So, um, okay, does somebody mind praying this out? Thank y'all for joining and for talking. Anyone? I can pray if nobody else wants to. Go ahead, Katie. <clears throat> God, I thank you that we can meet and I thank you that you, um, that we can hold on to you and you stay with us and you don't push yourself on anyone. I just pray for, um, those who are seeking and those who are searching for your peace. I pray that you would, um, just bring that to them and, and show them their need for you. I pray for all the situations people are going through right now. I know Sandy was talking about her parents' finances and trying to put those together and, um, everything Janie's going through. And I just pray that you would just, um, bring healing and peace to all those situations. And I um, pray that you'll bless the rest of this week as we go our separate ways and that you would help us to remember to seek you in your name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Y'all have a great week. You too. Bye.